Uncle Sam didn't appreciate Martel inviting all these dudes up there and they mentioning his mama. Is y'all ready to talk about it? Kill the music! Oh yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. back. I'll drop a player like it's nothing. It ain't working out. Now no debate up for discussion, bitch. I'm walking out. I'm walking my dial is money. I ain't loving let you toss it out. Flip my weave and walk it out. Look how I just bossed it out. Now come on, baby, why you bugging? We can't talk it out. I keep it moving, I ain't tripping, lost another spouse. I'm just a boss, it's in my blood. No, I won't scream a shout. Grab my Cause oh yes, bitches and hoes, I'm back. Back with another video. We're here to discuss Love and Marriage Huntsville, season four. I want to say this is episode 14 or 15. It'll be right down there in the description. Y'all know what the hell going on. Let's get into it. So uh, Uncle Sam showed up and showed out, but let's get into what happened. So the episode opens up. It's the night of the wine launch, the night of the event. The guys are basically rallying around Martel, celebrating him, saying how proud of him he all, they are. You know, he's come a long way with the divorce and all that stuff, and he's finally getting back on his feet. Martel's super excited about his wine event. Uh, all his family and friends are there. Everybody's a, it's a packed house. It's a whole bunch of women, a lot of women, which women are the main doggone consumers of wine. So I get that. But it's a packed house. Everybody's out. The event actually looks nice. Uh, Martel, everybody's mingling. Marceau is mingling, talking about, hey, my name is Marceau, talking to the girls. Martel sees his uncle. Melanika pulls him to the side and was like, look, Martel, it's go time. Like, this is what we work for. The event looks like it's going to be a success. Like, it's time for you to really start taking this in. Oh, uh, Melanika, the people is saying that you wants to be with Martel. And I kind of get them vibes too, but we're going to get there when you get there. But Marceau is over there talking about he need to find his ring out his pocket. Marceau be, be playing way too much. So Martel's over there taking a photo with this girl talking about act like you love me. And I was just like, okay, wh whatever. He gets up to do his speech. Now, Martel, you can tell, has never really done a speech on his own because he's nervous as hell. So he gets up there, he pulls all his friends up there, Chris Fletcher, all the realtor he was working with, all his friends, all his homeboys up there. And Uncle Sam is sitting in the doggone audience like, what? Like, he's looking like, wait, why are you bringing these niggas up here? So then Martel gets all the guys up there and gives his speech and basically says that, you know, it's... It's time that he's an owner, he owns things, and we always driving everybody else's cars and wearing everybody else's clothes. It's cheers to being owners, basically. He, he basically said the name of the wine, but it was more or less about him and the people around him who are owners of things, right? Now, this sets Uncle Sam off. Uncle Sam is looking like, man, what the hell? Marceau figures that the reason Martel is choking up, because Martel is kind of like iffy and kind of scratchy with his... Uh, with his speech, like he's kind of like, you can tell he's very nervous. Marceau's whole theory is maybe because when in the past they've had to do it, it was always him and Mel. Like he've always had his partner, but now it's just on him. But you know, he'll get through it. So Martel did mention that he named the wine after his grandmother, but then he goes into the whole owner speech. Now, Oko is mad. He ain't appreciating this. Melanika goes bring him outside because, you know, she got to be right in his face at all times. And she basically says that, you know, you did a good job. Everything is great. Uh, and I'm just like, Melanika, go go mingle in the room like you're supposed to be doing. Why are you all up in his face every time we turn around? Like, Jesus Christ. Uncle Sam is over there talking to his wife. And he's telling her, he acknowledging all these niggas and not saying nothing about my mama. Like, that's not cool. I'm like, oh, Lord, Uncle Sam a big dude, too. So Uncle Sam finally goes up and confronts Martel. And he basically tells Martel, he was like, man, look, you bringing all these dudes up here, you know, you, you disrespecting my mother. Like, that's my mother. And so Martel whispers in his ears as if he ain't got a mic on and we can't hear. This is national TV. You don't do this. Don't ever do this on national TV. You'll regret it. So Uncle Sam was like, you know what? Bet. I'm out. So Martel tries to stop him. But Uncle Sam was like, nah, man, you, you, you disrespecting my mother. You didn't, you know... You didn't shout her out or represent her the way you should. And Martel's whole thing was, man, look, you doing this at the wrong time. Have some respect. <laughs> Uncle Sam was like, respect? Is we really talking about respect? So they are going back and forth. Uncle Sam is trying to leave. Martel don't want to let him go. And it's just like, Martel, either you want to neutralize the situation or you want to feed into it. Let Uncle Sam walk out the door because he didn't already sun you on national TV. Let him walk out the door. But he's following um, Uncle Sam out the door. Now, as all of this is happening, uh, Chris Fletcher pulls the guys aside and say, hey, y'all notice uh, Uncle Sam, Martel's uncle? He's kind of upset. And they're like, for what? And then 
Chris let him know when he feels like, look, he brought all y'all up here, didn't acknowledge him, didn't, you know, really say much about his mom. Um, Maurice goes in to say, you know, this is his first try out the gate. Like, he not going to get it all right. But, you know, at the end of the day, he did mention his that this is his grandmother's wine. Like, the name was after his grandmother. Like, what's the big deal? Marceau feels like uh, he understands because Marceau was like, yeah, he probably could have pulled him up there. He did pull all us up there. He probably really could have done that. Big Lou and Maurice's whole thing was he named the line after like, damn, what else do she want? Do he want him to do? So as this is happening, Maurice, not Maurice, Martel and Uncle Sam is outside still arguing. And Uncle Sam was just like, bro, you done. Like you didn't represent mom, my mom the way that I felt like you should have. That's my mother. And I'm going to always stand up for her. Um, this is my feeling on it. I feel like, yes, Martel should have brought him up there. But if he worked at Popeye's or something, maybe that wasn't the place for him to be. You know what I'm saying? But even if he didn't bring him up, he could have said, went into depth as to why he named the wine after his mother or something like that. But I don't think he necessarily had to bring up Uncle Sam. Now, granted, the fact that he made it about him and the guys around him, I understand Uncle Sam's frustration. But ultimately, he don't have to do nothing. Like, and you can't stop him from naming the wine after his grandmother. So I'm confused on the Sam. But you fine though. I did I messed with you. We move to the next scene. It's the next day to leave. And uh Martel is in the three-piece double-breasted suit. And for the life of me, I was like, you about to get on a sprinter back to Huntsville. Where is you going? Uh even Marceau had to ask him, is that is he wearing that all day? But they asked what Big Lou was. Big Lou had to leave for a family emergency. So they get up on the doggone Sprinter bus. And uh, the guy basically says the, the event was top-notch. It was amazing. They all had a great time. The, we get to the other scene. Lou is at home with Tiffany. And Tiffany was letting them know that they got to be in Birmingham tomorrow. So apparently a, there was a death in the family. And this is what I was lost on. So there was a death in the family. It was an emergency. He had to leave. But the funeral arrangements is tomorrow. Black people don't bury people the next day. They just don't. <laughs> I was confused on that. Maybe it's just me. But anyway, so she's letting them know that they're going to Birmingham tomorrow. And then Tiff starts to ask him, how was the dog on weekend? And he was like, you know, the weekend was actually really good. It was a lot of long days and a lot of long nights. So she goes, what you mean long days and long nights? He was like, it was really more or less like a focus group. I said, a focus group? Child, Lou is trying to really downplay this weekend. So she asked, well, who was the audience? Who was there? And he was like, a whole bunch of women. And she was like, oh, so Martell invited a whole bunch of girls? Yeah, he did. Like, that was the whole thing. The purpose, it was for the wine. So it, it was ladies and men, but typically more ladies than men. So she asked him what he said in his part of the focus group. And he starts to thinking and talking about, oh, my mind went faint. But they played the flashback fact. Talking about open your legs like you open the wine. The people know what you said. But he talking about he couldn't remember what the hell was happening. Now, this makes Tiffany go like, now, Lou, you know I know when you be lying. Because I, I was like, Lou, you don't even lie good. But then he tells her about the rage room. So she goes, oh, y'all went to a rage room. What was that about? And he was just like, you know, Martel just wanted everybody to get everything out, you know, if they had anything on their chest. And she says, well, what did you rage about? And he said, I just raged out about pent up frustration. So now this brings them into the whole conversation of him basically saying that he had sexual pent up frustration in front of all of these dudes. She don't like that because she feels like, listen, we both have conflicting schedules. It's not like you're not getting it at all. You're getting it. But I just don't understand why you have to go out there and tell them that if it's really that much of an issue, we need to get help about it. You know, she was like, cause like, for instance, if, if us having conflicting schedules and not being able to meet up and smash is a big deal, then we prioritize it. Just like. I get out of meetings early to go to some of the sun games or whatever the case may be because it's a priority. Basically, you need to prioritize it. Big Lou ain't trying to hear all that. Big Lou said he needs some doggone get right. But then he asked her, well, do you feel like sex between you is transactional or do you feel like it's like a, a privilege? And then she responds and says, it's a privilege, but... If he wanted it three, four times a day, it does become transactional. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. I think she was just trying to um save face. But if he requires more sex than she do, it is not a privilege. That, that becomes a doggone transaction and a duty is basically what it is. We move to the next scene. Kimmy and Maurice is at home. And now Kimmy wants to know what happened on the trip, too. She said, either let me know I'm going to find out on social media. Girl... What happened on the trip is what she's asking Maurice. Maurice basically says that um, 
No, before that, she she she's telling him that she loved the fact that she was able to get some alone time. Like the the dog was gone, monster was gone, everybody was gone. My girl said she was able to get some alone time, as she should. So now this leads her into asking them or asking Maurice how was the trip. And now Maurice was just like, oh, Lord, well, the trip was good. And Kimmy was like, let me know, because if you don't let me know, I'm going to find out on social media. She's already in her mind thinking it's going to be another ATL trip like they had the last time. On the flip side, Letitia asked Martel how the trip was. And Martel says, you know, it was good. And do you know Melanika? And Letitia was like, yeah, I used her for an event before. She was like, he was like, yeah, she was there. They flip back to Maurice. And Maurice tells Kimmy that Melanika... No, Martel made it a note to let us know that Melanika was the real Mel and Mel was the 2.0, if it makes sense. So basically, she was the blueprint. He'd been knowing her longer. And Kimmy was like, why would he say that? That doesn't make sense. Because they smashing. That's my opinion. I'm just saying. Marceau, on the flip side, says uh, Mel, Melanika invited all the women and it was a whole bunch of women. And Tisha says, and y'all was the only guys? And he was like, yeah. And she goes, well, why would she do that? And he was just like, I mean, why not? On the other side, Maurice is saying that they went to the strip club that has really great wings. It was a really popular strip club that has great wings. So now Kimmy was like, did you touch anybody in there? And he was like, wait a minute. Before you ask me this and before I answer, I need to really get your definition of touching. Because it wasn't like I caressed nobody. Is it like physical contact? Like, what is it? You know what I'm saying? And she was like, you know what I mean when I say touch. Like, you don't act crazy. He was like, well, did I tap somebody? And in my mind, I'm like, why are you letting him play in your face like this? She was like, look, did you touch anybody? He said he may have tapped some people to say something, you know, a couple of things or whatever because of the music. But he wasn't really caressing or touching in the way that she's talking about. Um, girl, you let that man run mental gymnastics around you and you ain't even that slow. Anyway, then he tells them that they went to the rage room. And that Lou was bringing up the fact that he has the pent up sexual frustration. Kimmy says, yeah, Tiffany brought that up to me before. But basically says that um, they had it under control. Maurice's whole idea is married people have less, less sex. And that's just a fact. Across the board. Probably, but I, that's why I'm not married no more because I don't want to not be with somebody I don't want to smash. I'm sorry. On the flip side, Marceau's telling Tisha he would never be in a sexless marriage. And if he ever in a, in a situation or if a man is in a situation where he can't get no sex, he should be able to outsource it. You know, Marceau going to find a way to say he be cheating by not saying he be cheating. I'm just saying. On the flip side, Kimmy, people, Kimmy says basically married people need to date more. And Maurice was just like, what? And she was like, yeah, a woman likes to be wooed. That's going to make her want to sleep with you more because you can't just be like, plop, plop, ready, here you go. She's absolutely correct on that. Tisha's on the flip side saying, look, I think y'all give wives a bad uh, rep because they got a lot going on. They got the kids, they got work, they got this, they got that, and they got to already be ready for you to come home and dive on up in it. Marceau was like, man, husband's got stuff to do too. But they kind of go back and forth. And Tisha was like, you should do stuff like rub my feet or like make me feel good. But basically, both of the women are saying the same thing. You can't just dive off up in the in the in the you know what. You gotta warm it up first. You got you know how you you know how you start your car, but you let it run in the in the winter time so it can warm up. It's the same thing with women. Basically, that's what it is. But Kimmy really don't know why there's an issue with them and they sex life. Because she was like, it ain't like they got no small kids in the house. Like, what's the big deal? Girl, look. Maybe their schedules don't match. We move to the next scene. Tisha goes see Dr. Francis, girl. So Tisha goes see Dr. Francis and basically says, hey, I, that homework you gave me last time I was here, I've done it. And he goes, well, what was the homework? So the homework was for her to define who she was. Dr. Francis responds and says, listen, if you, I want to hear your answer, but if you give me one or two words, then I know you didn't really do the homework. So she explains that she got, she basically got home and defined who she was as far as her duties. So she's a mom, she's a daughter, she's a sister, she's, you know, um, all this, uh, a wife, she's all these things, uh, whatever. She says, but then she kind of struggled with trying to figure out who she was, like as a, as in, as an individual inside outside of her family and all those other titles this prompts dr francis to grab a mirror and say whenever you need to find out who you are this is the first place you should go she says funny you say that because i actually did that that's my go-to i went in the mirror i cried i snot i did all that stuff trying to figure out who Letitia is 
Like, I'm really trying to figure out who I am as a person. What Tisha got from being in the mirror was that she realized her goals are just as important. She said not only did she realize it, Marceau realized it as well because now he's always being really helpful. Like, hey, babe, how can I help you do this? What can I assist you with to get you to fulfill your goals? So now Dr. Francis was like, okay, look at Martel. I mean, Maurice, not Maurice. Okay, look at Marceau stepping it up and doing that. You know, he was like, he was really shocked that Marceau did that. Tisha's whole thing was she felt like Marceau maybe didn't realize that they were both going through something. Like Marceau had the depression thing going and then she had her own stuff. Maybe he didn't realize it at the time, but now he does. Then she brings up the fact that he went down there to Africa by himself to kind of find himself. Now, Dr. Francis is a man before he's a doctor. And he knew right then and there that was all bull. So Dr. Francis was just like, wait, he went down there to Africa and didn't take you? And she was like, yeah, she was like, but I had to do things. So he wanted to go by himself and, you know, kind of clear his head. And I know me on the other side, I got to get the kids together, find nannies. Basically making excuses as to why she was okay with him going down there by himself. He, Dr. Francis asked her, was she good with him going by himself? And she said, actually, no, she wasn't. She said, because she felt like it was something that they talked about the family doing together. Like she didn't really want to, you know make a big scene or make a big deal of it. She said, but she asked him uh, why he wanted to go without them. And basically he couldn't explain. He just couldn't explain. So she just kind of left it alone because she didn't want no confrontation. This prompts Dr. Francis to say sometimes confrontation is needed. Like that's when you're supposed to say, wait a minute. No, we need to talk about this. You don't just walk away with that. And then she was like, yeah, but I don't really do the confrontation thing. Dr. Francis' whole thing is he realized that there's a very, there's a big dependency thing going on. And she didn't understand what you mean by dependency. He said, basically, Martel, not Martel, Marceau depends on you by basically only giving you a very little thing, you know, very last minute things and depends on you to take the burden off of him so that now it's on you. Basically, he transferred that energy from him to you and you're definitely going to always be there to do it. She doesn't see it. He feels like Marceau going to drop anything in that relationship and you're going to do it. And that's the guy on the truth. Because he says that frees Martell's from his responsibilities. She says that, um, you know, she'll stick it out and see how it works out with time. And, you know, only time will tell. And Dr. Francis was like, well, what if that time costs you too much? What if that time takes too much of your time? Like, you got to really be better than that. So he wants to invite her and the friends and their couples all the way down there to a, a, a couple's retreat. Her whole thing is she wants to check with Marceau to see how it goes because she gets in the confessional and was like, Marceau really don't feel Dr. Francis since the last time they kind of got together. So I'm going to see what he say. But she's down for it and she's going to ask her friends if they won't go. We move to the next scene. Martel is at his mama house or maybe she's at his house. I don't know. And they're out there with that uh, Dollar General Grill with some food on the grill. So he's telling his mama about the doggone event. So mama was just like, well, Lord, what happened? And he said, yeah, Uncle Sam came there acting the fool. And she was like, well, did you do the Uncle Sam? He said, it don't take much for Uncle Sam, but he came there acting the fool. Mama's whole thing was, listen, low-key, I understand Uncle Sam. Like, Uncle Sam really feels like you got all these dudes up here. You ain't really acknowledging my mama. You ain't even invite me up. And was basically like, if I was Uncle Sam, I would honestly feel the same way. Probably would have reacted the same way. Martel gets that now, but he just really feels like, you know, it's a time and a place for certain things. And that's not, you know, that wasn't the time nor the place. She was trying to basically explain to him, you know, that that's how her mama's kids are about her mom. Like, they, her mom was a beautiful soul and a, a very great person. All her kids going to go up for her, period. And Martel has to understand that. But Martel was like, I get it. But that was my grandmother, too. I mean, I spent time with her, too. Like, I've helped her. I've done all these things. I missed her, too. Like, he can't just put it all on him because he's the child. As a grandson, I went through stuff, too. I mourned my grandmother passing just as well as he did. So that brings Martel into even talking about how they had NFL recruiters, allegedly, down there at the college to come uh, look at him. But he wouldn't even try out because he was still wanting the passing of his grandmother because apparently his grandmother went to all of his games as well uh he he really struggled with his grandmother passing is basically what it was but you know he feels like i put a name on the line you know and it means just as much to me as it does to him so he don't really feel like you know uncle sam got a, a leg to really stand on 
But Martel says he's planning another event in Huntsville. It's going to be something very uh, closed and very, what do you call it? What's the word I say? Intimate. It's going to be very intimate. Martel says it's going to be another event where here he's going to showcase more of why he named the wine that and kind of give his grandmother more props and, you know, kind of have something that's better than that. But Martel's whole thing is, look, I'm not a speaker. So when I got up there, I kind of winged it and it, it was choppy and it's all because I'm really not a speaker. The mama asked, did he call his uncle? He said he called his uncle 50 million times. Uncle ain't answering the phone. Uncle Sam said he ain't, he done. He ain't got no, no more time. But the mama starts to uh, really just reminisce on how great of a person her mother was and how beautiful she was and how everybody loved her. And I think that was super, super cute. We move to the next scene, child. Kimmy and Mel go out to dinner. So this is the last scene. Kimmy and Mel goes out to dinner. They meet up. Kimmy notices Mel's got a glow. You know, she's looking refreshed and, and free. And Mel says she sleeps so good at night. This is the best sleep she ever got. Oh, girl, ain't it when you get out of a toxic marriage and you ain't you don't go to sleep stressed out or wake, woke up tired? Oh, girl, that's the best feeling. But anyway, Kimmy uh, was like, girl, I see the glow. And she was like, yeah, girl. And then Martel, not Martel, Mel compliments her on her hair, the red color. So they sit down. Soon as they sit down, Kimmy, no, Mark, Mel asked about Maurice and how everything was going with Maurice. And Kimmy brings up the fact that they went down there to Atlanta with Martel for the wine. So now Mel was just like, oh. They went down there to Atlanta for the wine. Mel asked, so did that make you feel any type of way that they going back to Atlanta with Martel? And Kimmy was just like, no, not really. Yeah, it did, Kimmy. <laughs> yes, it did. But I get it safe face in front of the people. I get it. So she was like, not really. I mean, I, I trust my husband. Like, that's just what it is. Mel was just like, girl... You show you want to trust your husband because the fact that what we do know is when they go out of there, out of town, bad things happen. And Martel is a cheater and you might want to look into it. Kimmy gets in her confessional was like, Mel basically is trying to make it seem like everybody has been a cheater. Like, that's just not the case. But I, my thing with you, Kimmy, is you do have that second thought about him hanging with Martel. But you put on this front to act like it's no big deal, but it really is a big deal for you. It really is. It absolutely is. So you act like it's cool, but it's really not. And I feel like that's another way of masking that hurt that you really feel. Because you really want to tell your husband you don't want him hanging with Martel, but you're not going to be able to do that. Because Maurice is an alpha male in his house. And you know that. So you just got to sit back and take it. But she don't like that male trying to make everybody out to be a cheater. Girl... I'm a single woman. That's all I'm going to say. A lot of them are. But Kimmy asked about if she, if she heard about the wine. And Mel said, you know, I kind of heard a little bit about it. And she she said they named the wine after the grandmother. And then she said the, some uncle was there. And he felt some type of way because he didn't basically speak too much on the grandmother. And she was like, well, what was the uncle name? And Kimmy was like, I couldn't remember. But when she started describing what the uncle was doing, Mel was like, that must be Uncle Sam. Because Uncle Sam is very passionate. That's the type of person that he is. So I was like, okay, so she knows what happened. Well, she knows um, who Uncle Sam is and how he is. So after, so Mel was like, so what happened after that? And Kimmy was like, I don't know. I guess he just left. But Kimmy says she understands both sides. Now, Mel asked who was the event planner. Now, I feel like Mel knew who was the event planner before she asked. Because that's not even a question you ask when you're trying to get tea. But she says, now, who's the event planner? And uh, Kimmy was like, Melanika. And Mel was like, ah. So Kimmy was like, you know her? She was like, know her. She's supposed to be Martel's longtime friend since, like, grade school or middle school or whatever the case may be. But the gag is, she was my wedding planner. And two weeks before it was time to uh, get married, this girl called me on a three-way with Martel telling me that Martel is a cheater and was trying to smash and find out who her doggone assistant was and was just screaming, he's a cheater, he's a cheater, he's a cheater, two weeks before my wedding and quit. That don't make no sense. If he's her friend or she's his friend, why would she out him to you? Either way, Melanie could quit. She ain't get her money back or nothing. She said she had to find a doggone... Oh, mother-in-law, I don't know if it was Mel, Melanika's mother-in-law, or whoever. Somebody had to come in and finish off the wedding planning. How, Sway? How? How? This don't make no sense. I'm sorry, it really doesn't. I, I, I don't really get this. 
Mel's whole thing was she believed Martell back then because she was 22. But 36-year-old her wouldn't believe it. Uh, yeah, duh. But I get it when you getting ready to get married. But I, I just don't understand. I, I, I don't think that, like, red flag. That's what it is. Red flag. Red flag. If you never know you needed a red flag, you need one now. Girl, the fact that this girl is saying all of this and doing all of this, he would have never been able to be friends with her during my marriage. That would have been a wrap on that. And not even off the strength of her outing him. Just off the strength of this have to quit on me two weeks before my wedding. You would never be able to talk to her and I know about it. And the fact that Martel is running around hollering about she the real male and the male 1.0 versus the 2.0, Martel smashed her. I don't care what nobody said. He was smashing her back then when she was planning your wedding. And that ain't no alleged. I'm saying what I'm saying when I say what I say. That's what he was doing. But Kimmy couldn't believe that she did that two weeks before the wedding. Girl, now it's making sense why Maurice told you Martel had to let it be known that she's the original male. Mm-hmm. Girl, it's just a lot of mess in these marriages. Drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you later. Bye.